Adderby, Chapter 26. On Wednesday at recess, Miss W. sat down next to me on the steps, just like always. Just like always, she asked me, Anything you want to talk about, Ida? No, ma'am, I said right away, because that's what I always did. And thank goodness Miss W. always stayed for a few extra minutes, because I was thinking that if I didn't talk to somebody pretty soon... All that stuff I'd been holding inside of me was going to bust out screaming, burst through my outside so that it could get some air some air and find an ear. There would be little screaming pieces of eye to be splattered across windows and in kindergartner's hair and landing on top of you're not supposed to eat them outside sandwiches. Miss Washington, I said. Yes, Ida? Both of us were looking straight ahead like nobody would think we were talking. Did you ever do something that seemed right at the time, but later it seemed kind of wrong? Miss W was waiting like she was letting me have plenty of space to finish, just in case something important came into my head a little late. Yes, I have, Ida, she said after some moments, and we both let the comfort of that settle into me for a bit. Then I asked, did you ever do something because you were really mad? So mad and sad that you just had to try something to make things better. And it seemed perfect at the time, but then later it felt a little wrong. This time Miss W waited even longer. But now instead of liking her waiting, I was wondering if she'd realized that maybe she didn't want to maybe want to be sitting so close to somebody like me. Yes, I have, she finally said. And when I peeked at her face out of the corner of my eye, she looked sad. Now I took a pause because the big one was ready to come rolling out. But I was afraid to say it out loud so someone in the world would hear it and know it would be real. And know it, and it would be real. My insides were still rumbling, though, and I knew I needed to say it, or next thing I'd be Ida B's flesh and bone confetti raining down on the schoolyard. Did you ever do something because you were so angry and upset? You were just boiling inside, and you had to let it out, and it seemed like a good idea at the time. But after a while, it didn't feel so good. And what you did, well, it, it, and now I was looking real, real hard at the blue house across the street, not even seeing a bit of Miss W at the edge of my eyeball. It made people cry, and they think you're mean. My voice was catching and cracking, so I let it rest for a second. And you really didn't want to hurt anybody, I went on a little quieter. You just wanted the bad things to stop. I took a deep breath and looked down at my shoes, and everything else that needed to be said tumbled out of me. And after you did it, you didn't tell anybody else, and now you feel like a sink that's backed up and it's full of dirty water and cat hair and old whiskers, and if somebody doesn't get the plunger pretty soon, that nasty old water is going to overflow onto everything. Now that was just about the longest question I'd ever asked, and it took me a minute to catch my breath when I was all through. As soon as those words were out of me, though, right away, I had a better feeling that I'd had, sorry, I had a better feeling than I'd had in a while. That space in my chest that my heart was used to feeling, was used to feel, oh my goodness, uh, huh. that space in my chest that my heart used to feel was feeling warmer and a bit more crowded than it had in a long time, and I liked it. But I was also scared about what Miss W might be thinking and waiting for her to say something. I was looking at her sideways, worrying a lot. I watched her put her elbows on her knees. Then she put her hands together so they hugged each other. Her head dropped down, and she pushed the right toe of her shoe back and forth, just like Ronnie. Ida, she said, dark and slow like the water at the bottom of a river. I have done something very much like that. Well, I was so relieved because Miss W understood, and she was still sitting there next to me, that all of a sudden it felt like my heart was light and free and rising up and taking me along with it. I only got about two inches off the ground, though, and then I landed right back on the concrete again. Because when I looked at Miss W... Full on, she was staring at the blue house, but her face was tired and sad, and she looked about ten years older in ten seconds' time. She was remembering, and then I was remembering too. The sadness came back over me, and I knew it had to say I had to say something else, or we'd both be stuck in the sadness with each other until at last the end of recess, and maybe for always. What did you do about it? I asked. Miss W looked at her clasped hands like there like there was an answer inside there if she could only get them to open up. Well, Ida, she said, low and calm and sure like the deepest knowing. I just had to say I'm sorry. And that was it. That was all she said. All either of us said before the rest of recess. 
She sat there beside me, both of us looking out, blinking every once in a while, and let what she said to me settle into my heart. After a couple of minutes, a peace rolled out from that place into every part of me, so even my head felt light and a tiny bit dizzy. When the bell rang, we both jumped a little. Miss W. put her hands on her knees and raised herself up. Well, she said, let's get back in. Yes, ma'am, I said, standing up too, both of us still looking straight ahead. We walked back to the room with her a little bit in front of me. I could feel the breeze of her body made on my feel the breeze her body made on my face, and I could smell peanut butter and summer flowers.